recap of what your season has been like this year, Drew? <clears throat> so I came off of a winning the world championship last year in 2013 on the free roll tour. This year has been really tough for me. I've had some definitely mediocre to poor results. It's been tough everywhere we've gone. It's been challenging snow and dangerous avalanche conditions and uh, probably the highest level of competition we've ever seen. So it's been a, it's been a challenging season, but Revelstoke's definitely one of my favorite spots. I've been on the podium four out of five times that I've competed here. I won last year and this face we get to compete on the Mackenzie face is definitely one of the one of the if not the best venue we've got in the whole world so Rolstoke's definitely uh, exciting for me because I've got such a great history here great mountain really good venue and um, it's coming down to the wire for the Fred World Tour so this is going to decide the rest of the season what uh what do you like about the venue here the venue here in Revelstoke's awesome it's um definitely a legitimate high mountain steep face like you'd see in any ski film the difference is in Europe we ski faces like this in scale and steepness, but they're really rocky and really dangerous in that sense. Revy gets such sticky snow and such good snow that we've got this huge face, but it's covered in like this amazing snowpack. So it's a combination of big terrain, but this prime uh, Selkirk snow, and it's just a perfect combination. Great. So what do you think the difference is going to be? You know, the contest normally being up here in early season and. You know, this year it's up here in March. Do you think there's a big difference in terms of uh, snow conditions or how it's going to be up there? Yep, so Revel Revelstoke's always been one of the first events of the year in early January. This year, um, just due to some scheduling and weather, we're here in early March. That means there's going to be a ton more sn snow on the face. There's some lines that have been attempted but never accomplished because the jumps are too big or the snow wasn't quite right. I think this year with the big March snowpack, there's going to be some lion skeet on the face that have never gone down before. Great. Great. Looks like we're at. Traveling is a huge part of our life on the Freeride World Tour. I lost count a long time ago how many different beds I slept in this winter. And with the six stops, we do a ton of traveling. Every stop's in a different country. Here we are in Canada. This is actually pretty easy. I live in Seattle. It's just a seven to eight hour drive up here to Revy, depending on the roads. So I, uh, I got back from my last trip to Europe. I was home for two days and went to Japan. Got back, was home for two days, went to Utah for the snowboard event, home for a day and drove up to Revy. And um, it's definitely nonstop travel. So if that's not something you like to do, then it's definitely not the right lifestyle. But I love traveling and uh, coming up to Revy in a, in a spot like this is just you know, this is people from all over the world want to come here and ski. So to get to come here as part of my kind of part of my job is awesome. So once you get here, what uh, what do you do to prepare for the contest? <laughs> in free ride, the most important thing, second to actually doing your run, is inspection. So that means we don't get to ski the face itself before the event, but we want to get as much visual inspection as possible. I've got binoculars in my backpack. I've got my digital camera. We head out near the venue, near where the judges will be, and spend minutes or even hours or days looking off at the venue to pick our line, determine snow conditions, and uh, memorize exactly what we're going to do so we can go up there and nail it on competition day. So right now I'm going to head out into the cat terrain, which is adjacent to Revelstoke. That's where the spectators and the judges have a good view of Mackenzie face, and I'll make a little bench for myself and spend some good time staring off at that at that face. So when you're looking up at the face, what specifically are you looking for when you're trying to get out of your mind? So the Freeride World Tour, all of our competitions are judged on overall impression. There's criteria under that, but really you're just looking for the most impressive top to bottom run. Um, a lot of times, you know, your eyes draw to something that uh, might be a little unrealistic. So maybe put that aside for a, okay, here's my run. If everything is perfect, I can go for this low percentage run, and then maybe you'll have a run that's a little too conservative, and you know it's not good enough to put you on the podium. And I try to get somewhere right in the middle where it's pushing your limits but not being so conservative that you're not going to uh, not gonna impress anybody. That's great. Okay, so tell me a little bit this year. It seems like the venues have been different than normal on the Freeride World Tour. What is that like to be able to have to adjust to those venues at the last minute? 
we've had a few last minute venue changes this year due to whether it's low snow or avalanches and that's put us on either kind of subpar snow or or venues that are smaller than we're used to this is just kind of part of the sport you know it throws out curveballs but if you're not good at adjusting to these changes in the mountains then you're never going to cut it in free ride that's really kind of what the sport comes down to so while it'd be nice to show up know what day we're going to compete know exactly what mountain that's not the reality when you're trying to ski terrain like this so it's a competition but it's also practice for the real world you know this is how you have to you have to respond to these changes if you're going to ski in big mountains so aside from the skiing uh, what do you think the hardest part is What's the hardest part of being on tour all winter long, aside from the skiing? The hardest part of being on tour all winter long is um, kind of personal health and fitness and stoke. You know, if you're a ski tech and you're sitting at your home hill all year, you might ski more than I do. And it seems like being a pro skier on the Freeride World Tour, it's an awesome life, and it really is. But you also spend so much time traveling and in meetings or taking photos that you end up not skiing as much as maybe you had imagined. So you really have to focus on staying healthy, exercising when you can, skiing on mediocre days to make sure you keep your legs strong and keep your head in the game for when it's comp time. And when you're done competing this year, what's your, what's your plan? Um, I always like to say that once the competition's over, I finally get to start skiing. So I'm so focused on these competitions all through the winter that I kind of forget about my own goals and my own skiing. So once uh, Revel Stokes open and then or over and then Verbier's over, I'm going to uh, go ski touring in Switzerland, come home to Washington and get up in the mountains and start skiing for myself with my friends and um, get after it, get after it for my own goals instead of the instead of the judges. So just a couple of quick ones. So uh, what, uh, what sort of drew you to Eddie Bauer as a brand? Eddie Bauer just really seemed to kind of match the direction I'm going with my skiing. Like um, I started skiing smaller mountains in Park City. I moved to Snowbird. Now I'm in Washington and Europe a lot looking at these bigger mountains. And with Eddie Bauer's kind of guide-built heritage, it's right in line with kind of my my moving myself into bigger mountains and really look forward to learning from the guides that Eddie Bauer has on their team because there's some amazing athletes with just incredible experience and I really hope I can absorb some of that. Yeah, um, what's exciting for you about kind of connecting with the mountaineering guys? <clears throat> um, the mountaineering guys, they're amazing on the Eddie Bauer team. It's uh, definitely, they have a much more professional and kind of objective-based mindset than a lot of skiers who just want to go ski powder you know and so it's cool because uh it kind of teaches you to be a little more analytical you can say okay if this is the mountain i want to ski like here's a b c and d and i need all these pieces to come together i'm not going to be able to do it so instead of just going and skiing powder every day it teaches you to think a little bit more in depth about the stuff you want to accomplish that's great uh, just as a brand you know adventure is a big part of uh part of what we are uh, in 50 words or less, what was your biggest adventure this year? Um, <laughs> let's see, in 50 words or less. Um, I went up and I skied the slot couloir up at, near Alpenthal, and it was way too early. The snow was horrible. It was the most extreme thing I've ever skied, maybe. And I've skied in Chamonix and Chile and all over the place, and it was like you never know when you're going to step into this super gnarly situation just based on snow conditions. That was probably more than 50. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> uh, 